No. Oh, Well, you can be in here. I'm just gonna, like I said, add the sound in later because, uh... Okay. Hello. <laughs> Welcome. Uh, today we are at Fort Lupton, uh, which is in Fort Lupton, Colorado. Uh, today is a colonial festival. We're doing a little bit of gathering together for practicing our colonial history and sending in Bartanis. You know, it's been a long 2020 and, uh, haven't been able to do a lot of our reenacting and things that we've done in the past. So we're here today to kind of gather together and spend some time in fellowship and uh, spend some time getting back into our personas and our reenacting abilities. Uh, I hope you enjoy this film today. It's uh, little bits of what we're doing and uh, some rifle shooting and other things. And if you do, uh, let us know. And I hope you enjoy. Got everything they possibly need in this Colorado. Really? I'm, I'm the youngest member in there. Out of the whole thing, we have a smoking fire. I remember uh, yeah, no. out there called smoking fire. I saw tons of them. They're not worth cooking. They probably were some gas tanks, but it was a chicken. Gentlemen, how many of our knuckles you got? Are you, are, you, are you fixing to get into something? No, no, not really. Let's walk over here and look at them. Yeah. It didn't take much for him to get it fixed and get no. back into his fire. So it's yeah. good to actually go through a misfire like that <laughs> so that you know what to do. So one of the things we just we just hold our positions till the final guy because there's always going to be somebody still messing around with it trying to get it to go off. Yeah. A drawing of all the folks involved here. In Congress, July 4th, 1776, a declaration by the representatives of the United States of America in general congress assembled when in the course of human events it becomes necessary for one people to dissolve the political binds which have binded them with another and to assume among the powers of earth the separate and equal station to which the laws of nature and of nature's god entitle them a decent respect to the opinions of mankind requires that they should declare the causes which impel them to the separation we hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal. They are endowed by their creator with a certain inalienable rights, that among them are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, that to secure these rights, governments are instituted among men, deriving their just powers from the consent of the governed, that whenever any form of government becomes destructive of these ends, it is the right of the people to alter or to abolish it and to institute a new government laying on its foundation on such principles and organizing its powers in such form as to them shall deem most likely to affect their safety and happiness. Prudence, indeed, will dictate that governments long established should not should not be changed for the light and transient causes, and accordingly all experience hath shown that mankind are more disposed to suffer, while the evils are sufferable, than to right themselves by abolishing the forms to which they are accustomed. But when a long train of abuses and usurpations pursuing invariably the same object, evinces a design to reduce them under absolute despotism, it is their right, it is their duty, to throw off such government and to provide new guards for their future safety and security. Such has been the patent sufferance of these colonies, and such is now the necessity which constitutes them to alter their form of systems of government. 
The history of the present king of Great Britain has a history of repeated injuries and usurpations, all having the direct object of the establishment of an absolute tyranny over these states. To prove this, let the facts be submitted to candid world. He has, re has refuted his, his assent to laws the most wholesome and necessary for the public good. He has forbidden his governors his past laws of immediate and pressing importance unless suspended in their operations till his effect should be attained. And when so suspended, he has utterly neglected to attend to them. He has refuted to pass other laws for the accommodation of large districts of people unless those people should relinquish the right of representation in the legislature, a right inestimable to them and formidable to tyrants only. He has called together legislative bodies at places unusual, uncomfortable, and distant from the depository of their people, records, and the sole purpose of fatiguing them into compliance with his measures. He has dissolved representative houses repeatedly for opposing the manly firmness of his invitations on the rights of the people, in invasions on the rights of the people. Turn to the people at large for their exercise, the state remaining in the meantime exposed to all dangers of invasion from without and convulsions from within. He has endeavored to prevent the population of these states for that people obstructing the laws of natural of foreigners, refusing to pass others to encourage their migrations hither, and raising the conditions of new appropriations of land. He has obstructed the, the administration of justice and re refusing his assent to laws of establishing judiciary powers. He has made judges dependent on his will alone for the tenure of their offices and the amount and payment of their salaries. He has kept among us in times of peace, standing armies without our consent of our legislature. He has affected to render the military independent of and superior to the civil power. He has combined with others to subject us to a jurisdiction, a jurisdiction foreign to our constitution and unacknowledged by our laws, giving his assent to their ads of pretended legislation for quartering large bodies of armed troops among us, for protecting them by a mock trial, for punishment of any murders which they should commit upon the inhabitants of these states, for cutting off our trade with all parts of the world, for imposing taxes on us without our consent, for depriving us, in many cases, of the benefits of trial by jury, for transporting us beyond the seas to be tried for pretended offenses, for abolishing the free system of English laws in a neighboring province, establishing therein an arbitrary government and enlarging its boundaries so as to render it at once an example and fit instrument for introducing the true absolute rule unto their colonies, these colonies, for taking away our charters, abolishing our most valuable laws, and altering fundamentally the forms of our government. For, for suspending our own legislatures and declaring themselves un unveiled with power to legislate for us, for all cases whatsoever. He has abdicated government here, and by declaring us out of his protection and waging war against us, he has plundered our seas, ravaged our coasts, burnt our towns, and destroyed the lives of our people. He is, at this time, transporting large armies of foreign mercenaries to complete the works of death, desolation, and tyranny, already begun with circumstances of cruelty and perfidy, fiercely paralleled in the most barbarous ages, and totally unworthy of the head of a civilized nation. He has constrained our fellow citizens taken captive on the high seas to bear arms against their country, to become the executioners of their friends and brethren, or to fall themselves by their own hands. 
He has excited domestic insurrections among us and has endeavored to bring the inhabitants of our frontiers, the merciless Indian savages, who, who, whose known rule of war, warfare is an indistinguished destruction of all ages, sexes, and conditions. In every stage of these operations, we have petitioned for reliefs in the most humble terms. Our repeated petitions have been answered only by repeated injury. A prince whose character is thus marked by every act which may define a tyrant is unfit to be the ruler of a free people. Nor have we been wanting in the attentions of our British brethren. We have warned them from time to time of attempts to their legislature to extend unwarrantable jurisdiction over us. We have reminded them of the circumstances of our immigration and settlement here. We have appealed to their native justice and magnanimity, and we have conjured them by, by ties of our common kindred to disavow these usurpations, which would inevitably interrupt our connections and correspondence. They, too, have been deaf to the voice of justice and consanguinity. We must, therefore, acquiesce in the necessity which denounces our separation and hold them, as we hold the rest of mankind, enemies of war, enemies in war, in peace, friends. We, therefore, the representatives of the United States of America in General Congress, assembled, appealing to the Supreme Judge of the world, for the rectitude of our intentions do in the name and by the authority of the good people of these colonies. Do, I'm sorry, do, oh, for, for so solemnly publish and declare that these united colonies and of right ought to be free and independent states, that they are absolved from all allegiance to the British crown and that all political connection between them and the state of Great Britain is and ought to be totally dissolved, and that as free and independent states, they have full power to levy war, conclude peace, contract alliances, and establish commerce, and to do all the other acts and things which the independent states may of right do. For and for the support of this declaration with a firm reliance on the protection and divine, of the divine providence, we mutually pledge to each other our lives, our fortunes, and our sacred honor. Signed by order and behalf of, of the Continental Congress, John Hancock, President. Now you have We are now independent from Great Britain. Be that as it may, we cast our lives together and share the common fate. Thank you for attending. Huzzah! 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 Now this is your typical brown best musket. Would have been made by the Tower Arms Company in London, England. Uh, basically a smooth bore musket, 78 caliber, fires in mass. Accurate about 50 yards, about an eight and a half pound rifle. Uh, most reenactors carry one of these up to train infantrymen. Now if you are a train an officer or maybe an artilleryman, uh, somebody of a different status than an infantryman, you carry what's called a fusel, which is a much shorter rifle. Now this rifle can affix a bayonet to it as well uh, and make it a very, very useful weapon during the 18th century. And something that most men were familiar with as well as women uh, were very good at shooting and knew how to use firearms. I'm not going to capture any sound, I just want to see you guys shoot and just see. We have to go a whole lot faster than that in three rounds a minute. <laughs> We're new soldiers. <laughs> I'll do a little less powder this time. Great. 
the uh, so it would uh, prime or fire locks. <laughs> they they give you all those commands and everything. Yes. Yeah. Now the trick is to sh fire together. <laughs> Trying. And then, wait till you put about 25 rounds through there and the barrel's nice and hot. Yeah, we've done that with our Springfield. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if they both went off though. I hope you enjoyed our day at Fort Lupton and uh, seeing a little bit of the colonial reenacting that we do. Uh, we're going to be sharing more colonial reenacting and sharing more information about what we do and how we do it and, and prepare, as well as gear and uh, the other things that we use. So I uh, hope you all have a wonderful uh, very well for now. Like we're able to let them grow. So they had huge maples and they had some beaches and all kinds of crazy massive trees. They